Hi everyone. In this video, I'm going to explain to you the dividend discount model. Now this framework is very commonly used to value stocks or for stock valuation purposes. Now, one of the fundamental principles in finance is that the value of any asset is simply equal to the discounted value of all the cash flows that you expect from that asset. It doesn't matter whether that asset is a stock or a bond or even a real asset like real estate. As long as we can figure out two things, A, what are the cash flows that we're expecting from it? And secondly, what is the rate of return that we require from it? In other words, the discount rate for those cash flows, we can determine the value or the present value of those cash flows. And that is the value of that asset. And if that asset is traded in the market, like stocks are and bonds are, then demand and supply forces will work to ensure that ultimately the price that will prevail in the market will be equal to the present value. So sometimes we use the notation P0. P0 is nothing but the present value that you're expecting today at time period zero, which is simply the present value of the discounted cash flows. And so now with this background, let's take a look at how we can think about valuing stocks in particular. So let's suppose you have a one year timeline. Here you are at time period zero and you're thinking of buying a stock. And the question that you're asking yourself is that what is the price or the worth of this stock? How much should I pay for it? So what is P zero? Well, ultimately this price should be equal to the discounted value of the cash flows that you're expecting from holding this stock. So what are those cash flows? Well, at the end of one year, two things will happen from holding this stock. One, you can expect to get some sort of a dividend. I'll call it D1. D1 refers to the dividend that I'm expecting to get at the end of one year. And secondly, at the end of one year, you can also expect this stock to have some value, call it P1 or the price. In other words, this is what you can sell it for. So if somebody asks you what is P0 or the price that should prevail for this stock today, you say, well, P0 should be equal to the discounted value of these cash flows here. And so basically it's simply D1 plus P1 divided by one plus R, where R here is your discount rate. It is the rate of return that you require from holding this stock now, if you look at this formula a little bit closer, you'll see that there's uh, well an issue because what you're really saying is that in order for me to tell you the price today, I need to know what price I can expect one year from now. And somebody might just come along and say, well, what does P1 depend on, right? And the way to think about it is exactly the same. You say, okay, let's suppose that one year from now, this is the timeline that exists, and I'm trying to figure out what is P1. What would P1 be equal to? Well, if you were holding on the stock at the end of year one and asking yourself what you can get one year from that point on, in other words, here at time period two, you're expecting again, something similar, some dividend at the end of year two, D2, and then some price P2 at which you can sell the stock. And so P1 can similarly be thought of as the discounted value of D2 and P2 just one year back at your required rate of return. Once you know what P1 is, you can say, ah, I can substitute all of this into this value for P1 right here. So because my ultimate goal was to figure out what is P0. And so now, yeah, it's not going to look pretty, but basically P0 can be written as D1 plus, and instead of P1, I'm going to write, here we go, D2 plus P2, all of this divided by 1 plus R. This is all P1, right? This is all P1. And all of this then is going to be divided by one plus R. If you expand this, you can actually show that P zero can be written as D one divided by one plus R. 
which is this D1 divided by one plus R. And then this D2 is going to be divided by one plus R and then again divided by one plus R. So that would become D2 divided by one plus R. Yep, you got it, one plus R squared. And then same thing happens to this P2. It's gonna be P2 divided by one plus R squared because there's this p2 is divided by one plus r here and again divided by one plus r are we done eh, you'd wish but somebody can naturally ask the question what does p2 depend on and p2 as you can imagine is going to be a function of d3 and p3 divided by one plus r right so p2 is going to be d3 plus p3 divided by one plus r and you're then going to have to substitute all of this over here. Yep. Turns out that you don't have to do all that nasty math because if you keep on doing this for P3, P4, P5, P6, so on and so forth, ultimately what you're going to get is this, that the price of the stock or the present value of the stock today is simply equal to d1 over 1 plus r, d2 over 1 plus r squared, d3 over 1 plus r cubed. And because stocks are for companies which are going concerns, which basically means that companies have infinite or indefinite lives, this keeps on going forever and ever and ever and ever and never stops. What we're really saying is that the price of a stock today is simply the discounted value of all the dividends that you're gonna get from it. This is a powerful result because when we previously started, we said, oh, price today is a function of, is a function of dividend one year from now and the price one year from now. But remember that price at any given point is a function of future dividends. And that is what the dividend discount model says. It says that the price today of a stock is simply the discounted value of all the dividends that you're going to get from it. So there you have it, the dividend discount model. Now it turns out that there are some additional parameters that we can put around this framework that can make this model a little bit more useful. And that is something that I'm going to talk about in a separate video. The purpose of this video was to help you see why you can think of price of a stock today as the discounted value of all the dividends and dividends alone that it is going to produce. If you found this video useful, click the like button and subscribe to the channel. And feel free to ask any questions using the comment section. Happy learning.